Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. I'm Jenny Coder. If you guys are new here, I pretty much delete your stock questions and I explain things in the simplest way possible. Today we have a pretty amazing topic that I want to cover, guys. You know, th this is one of the most important topics that you need to master, guys, as you're preparing for your leak code, um, as you're doing leak code pretty much, right? As you're on your journey to master leak code, right? So you want to be able to get this down pack. So this is uh, we're going to be talking about big O notation, right? Big O notation is a very, very um, important thing that we need to make sure that we understand because guys um, when when we are doing an interview right we want to be able to confidently say the time and space complexity for whatever solution that we come up with right you know that's, that's what i'm saying it's a very very important point skill guys so let us get into it right so what is big notation right big notation guys is pretty much a way for us to be able to describe the performance of our algorithm right you know and how much does does this scale pretty much right No, pretty much and uh big notation deals with the worst case scenario right worst case scenario um there are other notations out there that deals with the average case and the best case but big notation primarily um uh, deals with the worst case scenario right the worst case scenario how much you know pretty much you could think about it this way pretty much any number of operations right uh how does it scale right now as your input becomes larger and larger right you know how does it scale pretty well right so pretty much big old notation helps us and be able to describe that right you know so we'll be going over a couple of other examples on this channel right pretty much common scenarios that we come up with when we do a leak code right you know so that you guys will be able to see the pattern and be able to use that right and um to have the intuition so that when you get a new problem you've never seen before uh you come up with the solution right and then you're able to come up with the time and space complexity accurately guys so it's a very very important thing so yeah so pretty much guys the first one that we're gonna go over is the constant space guys so as you guys know right constant space right pretty much means that um uh that the number of operations right for your program right you know to run right uh the number of operation stays the same guy right? regardless of the size of the input guys so the input could be a thousand right it doesn't matter we're gonna operate in the same amount of steps guys the same number of operations right so all, all constant space can be o of 26 right it can be constant can be uh, you know 26 can be o 32 pretty much constant in time the number of operation stays the same regardless of you no know, the input size you know can be extremely large a thousand a million is gonna stay the same so that's the, the key takeaway for for this one guys so you guys can see we have an example of that right here right we have this input array and then we're uh pretty much you know we get the last index right and then we return uh the last number right like, pretty easily right you know pretty much regardless of the size of the array right you know it could be you know a thousand a hundred ten uh, we're gonna be operating the same amount of operation guys so it doesn't matter you know what i'm saying so it scales pretty well stays the same right so uh if you were to, if i were to show you guys a graph you guys will see them so i'm gonna show you guys the, uh, after i'm done uh, showing you guys all the times complexities right you guys will see uh the different um the different um run times right and how they look and you see the perf their performance right when you compare them with each other pretty much right so constant space pretty much the number of operations is the same regardless of the input size right that that's gonna take away for this one so we this is your log of n guys she's a very very good one guys so pretty much those are your binary searches guys you whenever you need to search through a balanced binary search tree pretty much you no know, dividing in half guys at every step guys so that's why you know um using a binary search right when you have an input that's sorted guys it's a very very efficient way to do it right? because input is sorted we could apply binary search guys so pretty much at every step guys we would cut down the search pane half right the log and computer science right knows most likely you know it, it's base two guys so we because of that guys we well we divide it away so every so pretty much that we divide in half guys when we're searching through input array right so let's say you know you we get a uh, input array right say you no know, the size was 16 right instead of saying we had a target we have to look for right? say instead of searching through the whole array right to find that target right and then we could just simply do uh, a binary search guys you know pretty much every step guys you know uh, instead of it taking us 16 steps right to find the uh, target in the worst case right we could do it in four steps guys right uh by applying the binary search guys so because we do um log of n right log of 16 right uh it's four right no and this uh base two right so that's why i'm saying it will take us at most four steps guys if we were to apply a binary search 
on a sorted input guys so that's what i'm saying this is how efficient it is guys you could think when think about when the numbers get very very big guys we're talking about the millions and the tens of thousands right applying binary research guys is very very efficient right pretty much every every time you need to you're, you're cutting you're dividing in half guys it's gonna be your, your binary um it's gonna be log of n guys know it uh, think about searching through a binary search tree, right? When you have to search through element, right? And at every step, guys, we're uh, discarding, you know what I'm saying, half of the uh, binary search tree, right? And searching in the right spot that we need to search at right now, wasting our time searching the whole tree. We're just, you know, we're cutting down the search space in half every time, guys. That's what I'm saying. So, ver so very, very, very important, guys. So, key takeaway for this one, right? So, linear right so all of that guys see this one is a very very good one guys so pretty much it describes that your algorithm performance right uh will, will grow linearly and in direct proportion to the size of the input right so pretty much what this is saying guys uh pretty much saying that uh, let's say you no know, for your program right you know let's say uh you had like 10 numbers in your array right i'm saying 10 elements right uh the number of operations would take 10 elements 10 uh 10 would be 10 right so say you know your um your input input right array becomes like you know let's say a thousand right that means it would take you a thousand operation right pretty, pretty much it grows linearly right uh and in direct proportion to to it pretty much uh you get ten thousand elements then it's gonna take me uh ten thousand operations to solve right so pretty much it grows you know linear and it's pretty good guys so this is a pretty uh pretty decent uh, algorithm right you now i'll slower than log of n but you know it's uh, still pretty pretty good so um yeah so let's go to the next one so n plus m guys so this is um this is a very, very interesting case guys so as you guys can see for this example right we have uh, two inputs right because of that guys we need to account for the two different ones right they're not the same so we need to be able to differentiate between the two right so we uh said that we have n for the first input right and then m for the second input right because they're not the same you need to account for both of the inputs guys so especially for this problem guys because we're looping through both of the strings guys so we need to account for both of the strings so we look through both of them you know what i'm saying n plus m guys because you know what i'm saying so yeah so that's a very very good thing that you, yeah so it, you can't say of n guys because you know it can get kind of uh if you see L of N, right, which one does it represent? Does it represent the first one or does it represent the second one, right? You need to account for them. So, yeah, you got to make sure, you know, yeah, this is a very, very easy way to mess mess it up. So, yeah, so, guys, uh, the next one is N log N, guys. This is a very, very good one. Um, so, think about, you know, whatever you need to, uh, you need to sort your input, right, to be able to apply whatever, whatever algorithm that you can apply to it. That's gonna cost you n log n, guys. So, uh, think about your merge sort, your quick sort, guys. So those are mostly your um, uh, n log n, guys. Um, so we have an example of this right here, right? You know, we have this is a liquid problem. Uh, pretty much, we're applying the merge sort algorithm, right, to kind of sort the the length list, right? So you guys can see, right? You know, we are dividing in half every time, guys. You know, this is where the log of n thing comes into play, guys. So we divide, right? And then we merge, guys. We conquer. So that's why we, um, it becomes a n log n, guys. You know, we the log of n because of we were dividing, all right, at every step, guys. So, and then we are merging, which is going to cost all of n. So, when they, uh, together we multiply n log n, guys. So it's a very, very important, um, um, uh, Kind of tricky um, runtime. So, so another uh, popular one is n squared, guys. So n squared uh, pretty much says um, it describes the uh, performance of an algorithm, right? Is directly proportional to the square of the size of the input, right? So, uh, pretty much, guys, you know, say you have, uh, you have like you no know, ten elements in your array, right? You know, that means it's gonna take you a uh, hundred operations for it to. Or be able to solve whatever problem that it's gonna solve, right? So it is not good at all, guys. So pretty much, um, this is mostly your like brute force solutions, right? Uh, yeah. So pretty much, guys, it's easy to spot, right? Whenever you have some kind of nested loop, guys, you know, you have nested loops, right? Oh, uh, you normally multiply the terms, guys. So, so we see we have one array, right? And then we got we get the length of the array, right? And then we loop. We have a simple linear loop, right? On the outer loop, right? And then we have a uh inner loop right which is a linear loop as well right so whenever we have nested loop guys we multiply the terms guys so we have multiply the terms which is n 
times n right gives you n squared guys so very very important thing that you guys make sure that you guys don't all mess up all right so you multiply the terms guys so i have another example which is a very very cool so you guys can see we have a nested loop we have two nested loops right we have, a, we, have we have nested loops i mean right uh so that's kind of it's kind of odd right so pretty much guys you know we uh, we can't say n squared guys no we might be tempted to say that quick but it, that, that's not gonna cut it guys you cannot say that because that's not good because guys we're not looping over the same thing over and over right so this one is um n times m right so n to represent the number of rows and m to represent the number of columns right because guys we uh we have n to represent the number of rows right and columns so whenever i told you guys we have nested loops right uh we, we have nested loops we need to multiply them right so the terms pretty much right so n to represent the number of columns and m to represent the number of rows right so this is how you look through a grid right you know we look through every row and for every row we're looping through every column guys so very 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 good guys so this is the all of n times m guys so very very good all right hopefully you guys can understand that so it can be a uh, tricky one actually so uh two to the n right or exponential right? i say or exponential because it can be three to the n four to the n right pretty much you know the key takeaway that it, it is exponential right so usually uh this, those are normally your backtracking problem guys so whenever you need to try every possible combination of your input right so that's gonna be you know exponential in time right so this is a very famous one that i have here on the left side right we have the fibonacci right uh this is a two to the n runtime algorithm right because guys we're making two recursive calls in the same function right so you guys can see the uh the recursive tree right that we have here guys that shows us how the calls are being made and uh yeah it's, it, it is exponential in time guys so very good way to spot it right so pretty much you know whenever you get those kind of problems uh recursive problems right try to draw the tree right and then so you could kind of come up with the runtime as you're doing that guys so yeah so you see we're making two calls right there guys so hey, make sure you guys understand that right so uh n factor guys so this one's a pretty pretty good one uh not good at all very very slow guy even slower than the exponential one right so um based on the uh you guys will see the graph in a little bit uh pretty much guys we uh those are your, your permutation problems guys so whenever you're you doing permutation of like numbers or like you know letters or characters right uh, that's gonna be n factor guys so very very slow guys you guys can see right on the left side this is a liquor problem uh and um you have a graph right this is uh that i got from geek for geeks right uh pretty much guys you know this, this shows you uh the you know permutations right and the calls the different calls that are being made as you guys can see right we have a lot uh, more recursive calls uh for um for the permutation problem right so the ordering matters for the permutation right abc is not the same as bac right when you're doing permutation right so that as a result right you know makes it you know like you know a lot of calls being a lot more calls are being made so it's it's a little bit slower slower all right so guys this is the graph guys that i have here so the graph is pretty pretty nice you no know, pretty it helps you to visualize the different algorithms guys so you guys can see uh how the different runtime the runtimes right? how they stack up against each other right so we can see constant space the the fastest one right you know it's kind of chilling around with the log of n right which is a little bit slower which is um yeah which is uh yeah they're right about the same right you know what i'm saying uh now we get to our o of n guys you know o of n uh it's around the vicinity right so it's you know slower than um log of n and constant but you know definitely uh, uh faster than n log n right you know by a long shot right so you guys can see that right like you know it's uh yeah so you see your n square guys you know those guys are chilling in the horrible zone guy you don't want to get there right? it's those are the zones that are very very bad guys you get your exponential and your factorial times right those are the bad area guys you guys can see horrible horrible area no you don't want to be around those areas guys but sometimes we have no choice but to be in those areas so it is what it is guys you know what i'm saying so yeah so guys uh, let's go through a couple of examples right so what is the time complexity for this problem guys so i uh, just want to make sure you guys understood everything that i just went through so what's the time complexity for this one so i'm gonna give you guys a minute and then i uh, will go over it together all right so hopefully you guys were able to um take a little bit of time to check it out so pretty much what we have here guys you know we have a linear loop right 
all right so the o of n okay we have another linear loop right which is o of n as well so very very interesting right so this one's going to be interesting very very interesting uh so we have o, o of n plus o of n right so well, almost so this is pretty much n plus n which is two to the n right so yeah that's the runtime yeah uh, pretty much, guys, we drop constants where we're doing uh, time complexities, right? So big, on, big on notation, right? We drop the constants and we only keep you know, the, the term, guys. So it's O of n, pretty much, right? So simply just say O of n, right? We don't have to worry about it. So we're going to be going over uh, another example, right? So make sure you guys try this out, right? We might get this one right. So let's give it a shot, all right? So hopefully you guys were able to give that a shot, guys. No, pretty much what we're doing, we're sorting, guys. And after we're sorting, we're applying the merging algorithm, right? Pretty much we do a linear loop, right? Through the array, pretty much, right? So, yeah. So, you guys know that the time complexity is going to be n log n, guys, because of the sorting, guys. You know, the function is going to be bounded by, by the highest term, guys. So, the highest term determine the complexity of the uh, the program, pretty much, right? So, so let's say you had a piece of uh, you had a function right, that has that had like different piece of logic right. You, know, you had an n squared piece of logic, you know, at the beginning, and in the middle it has like a a linear a linear uh, logic, and then at the end right, it had like uh, n log n right. You now because of the n squared guys, the function would be n squared because we always take the highest term guy, the highest um, runtime uh, in the program right. That's 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 what the uh, program is gonna be bounded by. So pretty much right. So. So yeah, guys, this is the end of the video, guys. So I want to thank all you guys for uh, taking the time to watch the video, guys. If you guys found value, make sure to give me a like. If you guys are new here, subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing a lot of other videos just like this one. So um, yeah, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.